All right. Okay. No, I'm not in the light anymore. Come on. Well, I am, but I look darker. You know why? Right. I'm not in the shot. Get yourself in there, too. Are you in here? I'll get in there. I'll get closer. I'll block the medieval scarecrow. That's all right. Because you can go back in, like I'm saying, if you want to re-edit this, yeah. you know, if you do pans, and can you still, like, run the audio while you're doing pans? Like, if we're yeah. talking about something. Yeah. You know, like you guys did. Like, I didn't realize you dropped all that stuff in after the fact. Like, mm -hmm. you showed the... the um, uh, Riddick thing, and then you showed the Marjong thing, and you had all that, and then they I showed the clip. That. What? I bought that. Did you really? Yeah, you I got the game? Yeah. You have the game? It sucks, by the way. Does it really? Yeah, yeah, good. Hi. Know what you're thinking? Who the hell is this guy sitting in John Palancar's studio, like having a coffee, getting all chummy? I can't even get John Palancar to return my emails. This guy just gets to chill out in his studio. Who does he think he is? Josh Gates? Hi, I'm just Buck Spider. 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 Uh -huh. On tonight's episode, we find out who this guy is. Hi, my name's George, and I'm the host of The Secret Podcast. The Secret Podcast started back in 2016 when a group of friends got together with a singular goal in mind. To give hunters all of the tools and information they would need to solve the secret. Now, over the years, members have come and members have gone. But that core goal remains to give hunters the most accurate and up-to-date information available at the time, enabling them to best solve this puzzle. People have asked us what makes us different. Why are we so special? Now, that's a pretty easy question to answer. The answer is tools. Some people out there just want to tell you what they believe, man. Some people out there just want you to agree with them. But the podcast team set out to give you tools. We created 12 Treasures, which gives hunters access to every single page of the secret. Not even, not just American, like the Japanese pages, the high resolution images, the reconstructed images, translations of the Japanese pages. But not only that, we arranged meetups with key figures from the hunt. Everybody from John Frazier, Andy Abrams, Brian Zinn, Joe Ellen Trilling, Ben Asen, people who had never spoken about this hunt, we got them to talk about it. We put them on podcasts. We put the Palancars on a podcast. We archived message boards containing thousands of, of pages of information relating to this hunt, its history, the research that's been put into the hunt by past hunters. We've done countless charity drives for, for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, for St. Jude, and now we're doing one for Byron Price's fund. But most importantly, we created playgrounds for searchers. Places where, where searchers can go and talk about their ideas, where they can make friends and create teams. We created places that spark passion. Some hunters out there are only interested in dusting off all of our old ideas, creating bad copies of it, and presenting them to you in hopes that you'll give them some publicity or respect. That's not what we're about. We prefer to get shit done and getting shit done is what we're good at. So I'm sitting at home one day and Rachel comes to me and says, hey, let's go visit my family in Pittsburgh. And Rachel hadn't seen her family in, I don't know, 15 years, maybe more. So this was a nice little trip for her. Now I've, I've never wanted to go to Pittsburgh in my entire life. There is nothing in Pittsburgh for me. But I was sitting there thinking like, I'm gonna be there all week, let's find some other stuff to do. Um, it's not too far from Cleveland. Let's go check out the Cleveland site. Uh, and I got it in my head. I was like, why don't I just call John? Like, if I'm going to go to Cleveland, I might as well call John and see if John wants to have dinner. So I invited John and his wife out to dinner. And he said, you know, instead of dinner, why don't you come back to the studio and we'll do that interview that we've been talking about. Now, I don't know about you, but when John tells me to come back to a studio for an interview, that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, so that's what I did. And I sat for probably the weirdest interview I have ever sat for in my entire life. I didn't know, like halfway through this interview, I didn't know what it was about. It wasn't until the end that I figured out why John called me to his studio. I mean, it changed the way I looked at the secret. It changed, changed everything for me. So uh, buckle up, let's check out this interview. John told me to make him an intro about how I like the, the trip, I guess. Um, he said to make it awesome, epic, and not cheesy at all. So I, I very much not cheesy. Awesome, epic intro. It's right here. Here you go. What are you doing? Uh, 
no idea. George, how are you? I'm good. This is weird. Okay. Very strange. Yes, you're in my fortress of solitude. Yeah, I've never seen these before. Yeah, that's it. I didn't think that because I know Josh has been here, and this was uh, transported over to uh, Brooklyn. How do you do that exactly? Do you just pack it up and ship it? Yeah. In fact, that was uh, I. We did a special service through FedEx. It's supposed to be uh, first first morning. It was called, and it didn't arrive there all day and they thought it was lost and it got there at seven o'clock at night so evidently their mornings in New York are different than than what we think here in the Midwest so they finally did get it we were getting a little bit worried and it was in just a big box I didn't even have time to frame it it's still not framed you know but uh, uh, and it was the biggest one of the bunch because it was intended to be the cover and uh, so this is the largest the largest one of the bunch yeah I think it's like they gradually got smaller as I did more of them. <laughs> Just take a little bit. Up against side. deadline and things like that. And we were, you know, yeah, it Byron's like... running around the country. I'm painting these things. We're talking on the phone. We had some of them uh, uh, done. Uh, some, of, some of the approved uh, clues and stuff. And we were bantering back and forth on the phone uh, to figure out what, who was going to do what in the, in the clues. And like I said, I still don't know where they are. But the only treasure I knew uh, the location of was Cleveland. I knew the general location. I was there when uh, Byron buried it. But I had my back turned because I was, a, uh, I was uh, um, operating as a lookout for him. And when he finished burying it, I went back to where he had buried it. And he said, what do you think? And I couldn't see where he buried it. So when they talked about uh, Andy and um, Brian, found it how when they had to turn around and figure and count the stones and everything... Um, you know, I thought that was pretty clever. I didn't, Byron at the time was taking notes after he buried it, was looking around, he was writing things down, and uh, I'm sure he was counting stones and things like that. But like I said, I was there watching uh, if anybody was coming near it to tell him to stop digging, And uh, but he was done pretty quickly, and when I looked, he had positioned the dirt back around that you couldn't even tell that he had been digging there at all. The dirt was pretty dry at the time. And the rest of them, uh, like I said, I don't know where they are. I knew general locations, but not exactly. And uh, when Jason found, uh, uh, Jason Krupat, is that how you say yep. was uh, found the uh, treasure in um, uh, Boston. In fact, I thought it was kind of funny that Jason said not to overthink the clues, and he neglected to see that it actually spelled Boston <laughs> in, the, in the painting. But and like we said, the S stand is, stood also for Salem. Uh, she's a witch, as, as far as uh, looking like uh, uh, Christopher Columbus. Uh, they always were perplexed by, um, without getting too much detail about this round circle and some of the other things hidden in there. The circle is actually supposed to represent like a portal from the uh, USS Constitution. Yep, the USS Constitution. And um, so uh, it was kind of meant to represent that as far as the North Star and things. Uh, the other the other thing I think that they missed too is that uh, these are some of the, uh, the the flags that were hanging from uh, from uh, the USS Constitution there at the time too there was a, a band or an orchestra called the Boston Pops so I have it spelling Boston and then I have this uh, yeah that's a the little bubble ready to be popped by the uh, by the Falcon there. That's and, a contentious thing within the community. And, like, it's not popping, John. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> but it's going to be pop, so that's the Boston Pops. And it, it was nice how they, they did pick up on the uh, 
um, the pierce here that were on the uh, uh, the hair here. And Byron never told me why he wanted me to make this in the shape of a of home plate, but I thought it might have been the green monster like they were talking about, and not realizing it was in this in this park. And uh, so, and the rest of the stuff. This might be from a painting. This figure here. I'm not. I'm not sure. I can't remember. There was a painting that's. It's called Pandora's Box, and I forget who painted it. That's basically this portion of the painting. It's mm -hmm. the witch and the fairy and the box, mm -hmm. and she's opening it. I can't oh no, that's. Uh, but that was it. Was the reference? I'm talking about this little figure here. It might have been in another painting, and the the jewel was placed in her hand, but the figure was. I don't know if it was from the paintings uh, by a noted artist uh, over that are in the uh, one of the libraries there or something or some public building that's there. So, um, and then there are other things hidden in here that uh, I won't go too much into. We're not allowed uh, to know yet. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's like I said, some of these are. Uh, you could say there was a, a a general template, but there wasn't anything that was. Um, meant to be that the, the template and the fact that only certain things were done within that template then other things uh, sprouted out and went out from there. So, um, yeah, we've noticed that these puzzles, they give you basically the same amount of information, but whether or not they give it to you via the verse or the painting well, some is are different. More, yeah, I talk about certain paintings being, uh, you know, certain clues being more um, image heavy and other, other paintings being more verse heavy. So... There are a few things that I, I'm surprised people haven't picked up on yet. That there's a few things that I still remember about some of the other paintings that I know uh, that people haven't really uh, um, picked up on yet. That they, have, they haven't caught. And I, I can't say what they are because those paintings have not been solved yet. Yeah. But, uh, and sometimes it's, uh, it seems like you need to turn left instead of turning right in, in a way in some of these. And like I said, I don't know where they are, but I know... How, how Byron thought. I know that Byron had to get in very quick, like Jason said. He, he uh, he's got, he's got these treasures. He's got to get in and out quick. He's got to do it in a clandestine fashion so people won't see him. He's got to dig it deep enough so that it won't be discovered right away, you know. And uh, I think uh, 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 you know people have to keep that in mind. And now with all the people digging, of course you have to have. Uh, permission you just can't go the times have changed you know you have to uh um get permission now and you can't go around digging holes do you want to go over some questions that some people yeah have? so let me um um well here i can just hand you a list of questions okay and then uh so recently i made a post in the facebook group asking saying that we were doing this and asking if anybody had any questions and some of them are a little weird um <laughs> There's I a, like weird questions. There's, there's 93 of them. <laughs> God, put me under a hot spotlight and terror me. <laughs> yeah, some of these you're not going to want to um, answer, but I, I try. what I try to do oh. is get just vague questions. Michael Lutz asks, are there any location names, street names, or addresses hidden in those images aside from Boston being hidden? Well, you know... It's called a treasure hunt for a thing, you know. Yeah. I can't really comment on that. Legally, the property is still, uh, the copyright is still owned and the contract is still in force. So any, uh, the reason why I'm talking about these uh, images right here are because they've been solved already and I don't have the uh, the uh, Chicago painting. But, uh, so that's why I can talk about what has been already proclaimed and uh, discovered and then um, broadcast on the Discovery Channel. Okay, and that says, does Chicago or Cleveland, this is the same from Michael Lutz, does Chicago or Cleveland have their respective zip codes hidden in those paintings as well? They can't comment if they do or they don't. Well, we know that Chicago's got the latitude and longitude coordinates. In the well, that's, I, I guess it does. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it yeah. Whatever you said there, I think it could, it could very well have that. I'm the visual, Byron was the words. And then we um, cooperated on, or, you know, collaborated on uh, some of the... Uh, clues and he would tell me sometimes that's too obvious take it out or don't put that in but yeah. and then i'd say how about this and he would say that's that's better try this he would ask me to do things without telling me where the where the treasures were he would say you know uh what what, what about this or i have to do this what do you think about that i said well maybe if i do this and hmm. i i know that uh 
I don't know if I can say this, that uh, it took the internet to really yeah. get to, to that this is common knowledge to it's common knowledge. to to uh hi again are you starting to pick up on why i thought this was a weird interview like we're we're not really talking about anything new some of the stuff we already know that we already talked about before we can't talk about all of a sudden it was weird like if we can't talk about any of this why did john invite me to come all the way to his studio for this I, I don't know. I'm just sitting here thinking, like, what what are we what are we doing here? Maybe we'll find out later. The order of the words and they inputted it. It came out uh, to be something on one of the, uh, I think it might have been the neighboring um, country, because where this was found uh, was on um, Martin Luther King Boulevard. Which uh, here's another thing too. That the, the L for the bell here is for Liberty, because it used to be Liberty Boulevard. And when I told Byron they changed the name from Liberty Boulevard to Martin Luther King Drive, he was kind of happy because he felt it was buried. It was now a part of its history. The painting was part of the passage of time and history of the clues, and it made it more devious. But, of course, this was the second one that was that was found. And it's funny. It was found by nobody in Ohio. Yeah. You know? And I had given a... A presentation to a a, a school, a, a middle school classroom that my where I finally met where I met my wife actually, and uh, so the, her kids were trying to figure it out in her class, and they'd seen the uh, the terminal tower, and they were all excited. You know, this like the helmet here is actually off Soldiers and Sailors Monument that's on Public Square in Cleveland. There's a monument there. I can't remember what the uh, the pyramid here is on the sphere, but that has something. This is a uh, fountain that's by the uh, um, the Cleveland Italian. Museum of Art. Oh, and, we always uh, assume that was at the Italian Gardens. There's a you know, well, it might, might be. See, now, that's my memory. You know, it's been 40-plus mm -hmm. years that I've done hundreds of other book covers with, you know, thousands of images over the years, you know. So it's hard to remember some of this stuff. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is the Greek cultural garden thing. This arch here, too, this might be in this uh, uh, line here is... Somewhere by here, I think. You know, I mean, this is what the two columns in this are. So the the lion, this is, the lion is at the Italian Gardens. It's a fountain. It's the same. Yeah. The columns are in the front of the. Maybe the that's I, this was part of the the thing. That, you know, there's a lot of maybe misdirection here a little bit. And you know, we have the state of Ohio here with the Interstate 71 and the little key in here where Cleveland is on the east side of Cleveland. So. Oh wow! I never yeah, noticed that. 71, and here's. Uh, uh, 70 and 71. I didn't do, of course, I didn't get, you know, this is uh, uh, 75 over here. I didn't do 77. And a lot of the interstates weren't in back there that we have now, so there was a, f a few of them there. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so the, the interstates are there. And there are a few other things hidden in there, you know, that, uh, um, and I'm trying to think, uh, I know that uh, this this was the Greek, uh, Greece, because we did like a centaur and stuff like that, so. And people think that, that like the tail represents the. Yeah, real it does. Right? I can't really say. You know, I, I, I it's there. The tail is there. Something there with the there tail. Something there with the tail. Yeah. Okay. So, do you have any idea what the building is? At this stage, because since this is going to be the cover, we were also trying to show the treasure box, and the treasure box hadn't been kind of designed yet. So these were these were started before the box was created. Might have been. Might have been. I think we were all working on. I mean. Joellen was doing all those sculptures, and she had a lot of work to do for those. Yeah, and because uh, we have plus that photography. You know, Ben was Ben Asson was fo was the photographer, and so he had to coordinate with I think Joellen, and then they had to find locations to go in. And we had the famous comedian Henny Youngman pose with one of her sculptures and stuff like that. So mm. now this, you know, I have to appreciate some some of the creativity some of these people have. Yeah, that they try to, and they're trying to hit it from all angles, and I, you know. Uh, more power to them. It's, uh, you can't overthink it and you have to overthink it. I don't know how to describe it because sometimes there's, Byron's a really crafty guy. I mean, you know, the book wasn't in print for very long, I don't think, afterwards. I mean, we did the sale to Japan and they had, you know, they did the smaller version in Japan of the book and uh, and it kind of just, it disappeared into history for me. I mean, I went on to do other things and, you know, work for other publishers and, um, uh, 
I didn't work for Byron anymore, you know, but we're still good friends. And uh, he would call me up and use one of my pieces of art if he saw a painting I did for a, a gallery or a show and he could use it on a book cover. He would call and say, can I use it, you know, for the one-time rights usage? But uh, yeah, we still kept in, you know, contact and we'd still meet up when I would go to New York to see other clients, you know, other publishers and things. But uh, um, as far as what he would say to other people about bigger gems, um, more value if they're harder, I know that some of them got harder because of just they became more verse heavy and they became lighter in the in the visuals. So you have to look at where each painting is going to take you, whether it drops you with only so much knowledge and then the other part has to be picked up by the verse or that and then maybe you come back to the painting and you say well that's what that little innocuous thing over in the corner means or something and sometimes like i said i don't know where they are but when jason started talking about the boston painting um, it triggered some memories of some of the photos that byron sent me like i said of of the uss constitution there and uh um a couple things with baseball diamonds and things like that. And I was like, yeah, okay, now it kind of makes sense, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I only own part of it. You know, it's like, it's like uh, I think I've always talked about, I talk about the SR-71, you know, the super supply plane when they built that, you know, how everybody only knew a part of what they were building until it all came together in some secret hangar somewhere. And, they, you know. Oh, were, were any of these people inspired by real people? Any other people in the paintings? Mm-hmm. Oh, by, we mean inspired by real people. That's just what the question asks. Are any of the people oh, in the paintings wow. inspired by real people? Well, I had models. You know, I even had a model for this that they think looks like Christopher Columbus. Yeah. You know. And uh, this is actually my brother here, you know, who posed for the centaur. You know, I mean, he doesn't have a horse body. <laughs> uh, well, so, the new worlds. These are all but, like super specific. Uh, I had some models, and then I... I uh, you know, could tweak them a little bit. It's like where Josh talked about the uh, the lion and the girl's face. There's there's a little bit of tweaking and stuff that goes on, and um, you know things are changed a little bit. I don't. I didn't go for likeness. I guess I could. You could say. You know. So more. Here's, for, here's one you like talking about. Are there any tricks required to interpret anything in the images, like using mirrors, folding, 3D glasses? You know, like Mad Magazine yes. when you had to fold. Yes, but I can't. That's all I'm going to say. And I, I can't you, say which one. I figured you would say that. I can't, yes. Uh, and I can't tell you if it's anthropomorphic distortion or if it's color field shifting or if it's... Um, let uh, me ask you this. So anthropomorphic, there's a painting, I forget the name of it, but it's a skull. It's a, it's a painting. I think it's, it's Hans Holbein painting. Yeah, where it's, it's stretched you know, out. You know I think, yeah, about. it's the two uh, merchants or something like that. If you were to stand in front of this painting... And you were to angle yourself properly. The skull is very, it's, it's very obvious. I've seen the original painting. Right. Yeah. But if you do it in a book, it's not so easy. It's, it's yeah, something. Even though, even if when you see the real painting, it's still like, you're like, what the hell is that? Yeah. And then they have a spot on the floor that you walk to. Right. And you look at the painting, or, and then you see the foreshortened skull. But I'm curious if that applies to your, your work as well. Like anthrop anthropomorphic, anthropomorphic I've, right? u I've used it in, in covers before, yes. But once it's printed, does it does it translate to the printed page um, as well as it yeah, does in... Yeah, Okay. Yeah. It's just because it's a 2D surface, you yeah. know? And all you're doing is stretching an image. It's like you can do that in Photoshop now very easily. You could stretch it, you could stretch it so, so much that you... It's almost recognizable, and you'd have to get so far. Yeah. And then you're talking about your depth of field. You know, you're talking about uh, the bokeh on the image to try to focus it, even with your eyes. Because you we've, we've always assumed there's something like that in the Charleston painting, um, and I do that with air quotes. Uh, but no, no one can make it work. And I, I, I just kind of figured it was because it was a big painting taken down, made small, and it's hard to do in the book. Yeah. Well, so yeah, it was a little discouraging. Like I mean, even in this one, like I put all the. The work in the eyes and things like that, you know, tear ducts and irises, and when it when that head is the size of a quarter, you know, it yeah, you can't it, see any of it. You know, you have three hundred DPI printing for, and it's that even on the cover where it's a little bit large. It's a trade paperback, and uh, the shellac that they varnish that they put on the uh, cover to give it that glossy uh, feel and uh, increase the uh, contrast of the image. Uh, it still joints together, so it's a little bit uh, 
a little bit um, um, discouraging when you put that kind of work into something. But most of them translate. Uh, most of it translates. Uh, I don't know about the new version because I've I've read things and heard people say that the new version of the book is poorly printed it's and not. it's very very blurry, so it doesn't have the resolution. Uh, you're probably better off looking at stuff online. I think to yeah. be honest with you, I think some of those are. Very good, you know. And if somebody has scanned something from the original book, where the uh, they have the uh, um, oh, they get better which, than that. How, how's that? <laughs> well, there's there's one person that's taken uh, five or six different copies of the book, scanned them all, combined them all, and got a level of detail that's really yes, oh, un cool, unprecedented. Very cool. Very um, cool. So we were talking about earlier. Can yeah. we name either of these? I don't. You know, I just I. Um, well, you said I, at this point they don't technically have names. Yeah, they don't. I mean, this, you know, I mean, I, I, I think this is like kind of the Cleveland Monument. I mean, and I couldn't say that before it was discovered, you know. Right. But, but uh, um, and uh, I, it's more sometimes too, you know, cultural gardens. And then I, I think of this one as it's like the Salem Witch and stuff. And the one behind you, I think of as, uh, you know, the medieval scarecrow. Kind of thing. I also think of one of those things that they use when they're jousting that spin around, kind of like a a jousting a, target. Yeah, like a or, or kind of like a even some type of windmill that maybe it's pointing in a direction where something is or something. So, but <laughs> yeah. wait, now you got a few more questions here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, no, I figured we, we could just talk. I mean, because okay. I think most of the stuff that people want to know, you can't really say. Yeah, I can. I mean, I have to. I have to honor the contract. Like I said, it's very much alive, um, and I mean, I I have to thank the people that spend all this time, and I get these packets in the mail from people that have spent an awful lot of time, and I can't comment on them, and I really feel bad about that because they've worked so hard on this, and I don't know if the person who owns the uh, and controls the copyright now is responding to them, which I think he should. He's not, and it's part of his duty to as. Uh, as publisher, should at least give these people a bearing instead of, uh, you know, some kind of false hope or something like that. I want to commend you because uh, Byron's, you've done so much uh, fundraising, right? Yeah. For this, I mean, you kind of head up this community of how many people now with the uh, like thirteen thousand, thirteen thousand, like and you've done uh, charity work for Byron, right? You raised money for. St. Jude and Make-A-Wish. St. Jude, that's my, St. Jude is my charities and stuff like that. So I think you should be commended uh, for that. And I have a some, little something for you here that uh, you may want to uh, share with the viewers here. Okay. And Oh, here, wait. That has my address on it. Don't look. Oh, uh, you might want to pull that out and this is, this is going to be yours. No, you're fucking kidding. No, I'm, I'm serious. Oh, my God, John. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I can't. Yeah, it's yours. Oh, my God. A lot of people tie their self-worth into this puzzle. They think, like, if they can't solve this, this random puzzle from the 80s, that they're worthless or they're not intelligent. They're just not good enough. They don't realize that only 12 people can solve these. Only 12 people can have a cast. There is more to this puzzle than the cast. There's friendships. There's adventures that you have with your family. There are things more important than the treasure. This puzzle is going to be around for a while. It's been around for 40 years. And it will give you good things. As long as you put good things out in the world because of it. Treat people nice. Treat people with respect. Have fun. And the puzzle will give you something more valuable than